the money as soon as the same business day. Go to CashNetUSA.com to apply for the money you need. Goodwill, changing lives through the power of work. Valentine's is behind us, but it is still time in the month of February to focus on your heart health. This is the month that we pay even more close attention than we do during the rest of the year. So a fitting time for us to bring in two experts in the field, Scott Rowe, who is with Encompass Health, and Emily Fuller, who is with the American Heart Association. Good to see you both. Good morning. It was appropriate to bring you both together today because you're working together, Scott on a regular basis with Encompass Health. It's a national organization with a, a local branch here uh, in Chattanooga, but it makes sense to team up with a national group like the American Heart Association. Yes, it has been kind of a natural partnership and we have worked together for, for many years on a local level and just recently on a national level as Encompass Health is a national sponsor of the American Heart Association. So we, re we recently, uh, observed, if you will, Go Red for Women back, what was that, the 5th of February, Emily? Yes, it sure right? was. Looked a little different this year, but um, the American Heart Association, obviously passionate about heart health for everyone, but for women, there is a special focus. Why? Well, heart disease remains the number one killer of women, and in fact, it kills one in three each year. So um, we're trying to call sort of the extra level of awareness, especially uh, in current times. So can you elaborate a little bit? I should know these warning signs and statistics like I know my own name and social security number because my father died of a heart attack uh, when he was in his early 50s. Heart disease ran in his family. My brothers and I have always been very watchful, but I probably don't pay enough attention, Emily, to what my symptoms might be. Does that make me pretty typical? Absolutely, and that's really where Go Red, for, Go Red for Women was born. You know, we realized that women didn't recognize that their symptoms for heart disease and stroke were different than men's. And so we started to make a concerted effort to educate first, right? So it's not the typical Hollywood heart attack that you might see in a movie. Women sometimes will mistake their symptoms for, you know, just being exhausted, right? We do a lot. And so sometimes we might think we have indigestion or that we're tired or maybe a little depressed or have anxiety, when in reality, we have to pay attention to our bodies and advocate for ourselves uh, because, you know, it may be that you are having heart attack symptoms and you just set them to the side and we would much rather, you know, have women go to the emergency room uh, just to make sure. So, okay, if you're going to talk about going to the emergency room, Scott, I'll let you jump in here if you want, but if it's appropriate to punt it back to Emily, that's fine. But here we are living in this COVID world for the last year. Did that deter a lot of women or and men from getting the help that they needed? Yes, I, I think we did actually see that in the last year. And it's, it's kind of frightening, um, whether it was signs of a, of a heart attack or signs of a stroke that um, folks, unfortunately, in the, in the community were afraid to seek needed um, uh, medical care um, because of the fear of COVID. And um, we saw in, um, in, in a local area, and especially even with our hospital, uh, a drop in numbers related to these diagnoses. And, and some of that is just that, that fear of COVID, which is unfortunate because uh, it is just as critical, if not more so, to seek care if you have signs of a heart attack or of a, of a stroke. What you're able to do at Encompass, and I may have this wrong, so you're free to correct me on the air, but uh, you can have a heart attack or, or a heart concern, go into the hospital, and you can be released to go back home. But often there is a rehab uh, period of time that you have to go through. Is that where Encompass steps in? It, it, exactly. Um, you know, people traditionally think of inpatient rehab for people recovering from stroke or brain injury or maybe a major multiple trauma. Um, but we also have quite a few patients that are here recovering from open heart surgery, uh, from bouts of congested heart failure and other forms of heart disease. And so we're able to help those patients in regaining their strength, um, continuing to regain their medical stability after um, recovering from these situations. Um, you know, we provide a hospital level of care, and particularly with patients who are 
um, uh, recovering from a, a heart condition, you know, it's important to have that hospital level of care where they have um, the availability of a physician every day, um, where, for example, in our hospital, we can provide telemetry monitoring just as would be done in a hospital setting, uh, respiratory therapy care that's so important for these patients. And, and that's in addition to just what you would traditionally expect to see in an inpatient rehab hospital, which is therapy provided by physical therapy and occupational therapists and speech therapists to regain strength and uh, regain independence and then return home. But it's done on a more almost aggressive level, if you will, right? I mean, this is not a time to just sit back and, and heal. The healing process is very active at Encompass. It, 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 you're exactly right. Um, and, and I think sometimes there are some people who get a little bit intimidated by hearing of an intense level of therapy, um, but we do provide um, the most amount of therapy in any setting, um, but it is also individualized. It's tailored to what that patient can tolerate. And so we do sometimes see patients that start their stay at a, a pretty fragile level. Um, we have to progress kind of slowly to start with and then gradually build up to what they can tolerate. So it's, it's definitely um, individually based uh, as far as the development of their treatment plan. I'm sure you're getting questions on a pretty regular basis and I'll speak on the Encompass side, then Emily, we can go to you with the AHA. But on the Encompass side, when someone does transition over to you, what is the family doing in terms of access right now with COVID? Uh, well, for our particular hospital right now, we still have restrictions in place for visitation. Um, that is something that we have modified as we've gone through the pandemic. Um, we were able to open it up for a, a while before the holidays, but then chose to restrict visitation as the numbers in our community um, were on the rise. Um, you know, this is a very vulnerable population we have here, and so we want to make sure first and foremost that we're protecting them. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, we've been creative. Um, we're fortunate that we have all of our patient rooms on the first floor, so uh, all rooms have a, a, a large window in them, and so that's made it convenient for our patients to still be able to visit face-to-face -face, uh, and still see their loved ones and, and interact in that, that way. That's very nice. So Emily, can I ask you this too? Uh, I mentioned my father and, and his heart disease and how my brothers and I have been careful, but I've been now taught that to a degree to my daughters. Do you um, find that young people need to be aware of these heart symptoms as well? Because doesn't it strike at younger and younger ages these days? Absolutely. At the end of the day, we want everyone to be aware of the signs and symptoms and the earlier we can arm people with the information they need, the more educated they can become. And we really encourage people to understand their family history. And, you know, as we hear Scott talk about, you know, it being encouraging people to listen to themselves, you know, to their bodies and to go seek care. You know, that's another thing we've been supporting our inpatient and outpatient clinical partners to say, don't die of doubt. You know, if you see, you know, heart attack symptoms or you suspect that you might be having a stroke, we really are encouraging people to go, uh, go to rehab if you're scheduled to be there. Go to the ER if you suggest that if you think you might be having um, heart attack symptoms they are prepared for you and so really i think that's the the name of the game right is making sure people are prepared educated they understand their risks and they know what to do and right now even amidst covid that there are protocols in place and they should feel confident and safe to take you know put their health and safety first and uh if you wanted to be cpr certified are those classes still going on Absolutely. We still work with our, um, you know, our partners to make sure that if you'd like to be CPR certified, there is a some digital options as well. And we've been doing quite a bit of hands only demonstrations in the digital space just to arm people temporarily and to help them understand that you can still conduct effective CPR with just your hands um, and compressions. In the, during this time. Well, it is great to spend some time with you remotely. Uh, but Scott, if people are watching you this morning and they're thinking, okay, I think I'd like to try Encompass uh, for my loved one or for myself, do they self-refer to you or does the doctor have to send them your way? Uh, we can work through kind of both routes. They can self-refer. We're going to follow up with their uh, primary care physician if that is the case. Um, if somebody is in an acute care setting, uh, it's just important that they discuss that with their case manager as they're looking at their discharge plans 
and um, asked to speak to a representative from Encompass Health. All right, well, here is the information. Good to see you both. Enjoy this rainy day. Yes, thank you for having thank me. Thank you. Encompass Health on Macaulay Avenue. Their phone number is 698-0221. You can also find them online, encompasshealth.com. We're back after this. How is yours? Because you got the spicy cheesesteak. A little.